Hello and uh, welcome to the, the latest installment of the Clan Nevada podcast series, Keeping Up With The Clan. Um, I am joined by a man who genuinely will, know, will need no introduction to anybody who has any interest in the clan whatsoever. And I can talk from personal experience, and indeed that's why I'm here presenting it. He's a man who took the clan senior team from very nearly their lowest ebb up to Division I football and senior championship football. A Hilltown man at heart, but a clan adopted man at this stage. You're very welcome, Tony Wilson. How are you doing? Very good, Connor. Thanks. Thanks for having me. You're very uh, welcome. I well, didn't think my words would be that well uh, needed in Clannavana. No, well, we'll see. We'll see. Firstly, how are you keeping and how's the family keeping during lockdown? Ah, very best. Uh, look, it's different. Uh, kids all at home. Uh, I've still been working away. But, yes. Uh, you know, doing a whole lot less traveling now. So I don't know. I think Aileen's probably sick of looking at me, but the kids are glad to have me around. So. Uh, and what are you your ones now, Tony? The last I saw, I think the last I saw you was our mutual friend Mickey McAllister's wedding, which is oh, three, four yeah. summers ago at least, maybe maybe longer. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you remember Oren, yeah. uh, who I would have taken to the training sessions. He was maybe only geez, five or six at the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Oren's in his first year in St Mary's. Brilliant. Uh, he disappeared there on Monday to go up to see a few of his mates. and He's not home yet. He's <laughs> not home yet. Uh, <laughs> I, went, I went for a long run around the Holy Lands yesterday. Is he living? Right. Where living? Is he living the, or where are mates living? Well, he's not too far away from there, I would imagine. <laughs> Very good. But, uh, they're all getting big. Oh, the youngest is nine, so he sort of keeps me a wee bit, keeps me feeling a wee bit young. Yeah. Very good. What about your ones? What age are your kids? I have a three-year-old and a six-month-old or five and a half-month-old now. Oh man. Oh man. So, Three-year-olds up above me here. Hopefully she won't wake up, but the wee one could easily go at any stage. So if there's any interruptions, she'd say to the audience, then it'll be it'll be my fault. Um, if there's any interruptions here, it'll be Oren coming home. <laughs> I'm getting warm here. Can I ask, Tony, obviously the first time I ever met you, well, can I ask you your recollection of how you came to be even asked about being our senior manager? What was the contact or what was the link? Well... <laughs> It's a strange man uh, to either take the credit or the blame. Uh -huh. uh, we had the shop down on the Lurgan Road yeah. and Paddy McDermott had bought a bit of floor in office and Paddy must have had a lot of time on his hands and every other day Paddy went down to the shop for a bit of crack and crack was good with Paddy to be fair. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he'd been calling in and he'd been giving me the whole story about Clannabana and, and Paddy, I don't know if Paddy was playing then, he might have been. Or, but given, sort of given off, things weren't going well. Yeah. And then I think Rusty had left. He had left Paddy when he left. A third of the way through the season, I recall. Yeah. Or I think Paddy, Paddy landed down. You're the man for the job. Uh -huh. And like I was, I was 35, 36 then. And, yeah. You know, I had done a season with Clonduff, with Jim McCarry. And... Uh, Sort of stepped away, you know, because oh, look, Jim McCarry's a legend in the game, and he wasn't really listening to to us boys. So, oh, when sort of you say him, but, Tony, Tony, were you still playing, or were you on a select were him part of his? Funny team? enough, I was still getting an odd game. So while I was involved as a selector, I was still getting an odd game. But anyway, uh, as I say, I moved away from that, and Paddy, Paddy was fairly persuasive. And he asked me to go and watch a game. Yes, we're playing Drum Gath. Yeah. Drum Gath. That was going to be my introductory story. I, I can't yeah. remember how the game finished. I assume it must have been a league game, wasn't it? It was, yeah, if... it was a league game. And because Drum Gath was so close to us, myself and Robert jumped in the van and went over and watched it. And he's actually played really well that night. Did they? <laughs> and uh, I remember me and our fellow was sitting at the, on the sideline and he kept on saying, geez, some good players here. Yeah. And Paddy Feeney in particular that night had a brilliant game. Like I remember, you know, we we're just sitting saying, I think maybe Paddy was involved with the down one of the twenty ones. Yes. And it was actually, I suppose, Robert, more than anyone, sort of said, Jesus, you know. There's something to work with. There's something there, you know. Yeah. And you were maybe sitting second or third bottom. Yeah. And uh, the next thing McDermott lands over 
and I was dragged basically into your dressing room. I think, well, I think I, there's something up at the back of my head. I think you must have told me that story before. You hadn't been confirmed as our manager, is that right? By the time he dragged you in. So just for the, the audience, the match had finished. The senior team were in the showers and getting the gear back off ourselves. And next thing you're brought to the door and basically announced by McDermott, who I think was still around the team. He's probably injured or something as our uh, new manager. But is it right to say that the committee hadn't ratified it yet or you hadn't got the official nod? To be honest, Connor, I don't even know myself. I was sort of dragged in and the next thing right, lads, I see is on Monday. And that, <laughs> and that was it. Uh, and I, I don't think there was that many knock on the door for the job. I think Seamus Ryan came over maybe the next day and said, you're starting on Monday, I believe. And, Very good. You know, so, uh, and that was it. You know, went up sheepish on the Monday night. I'd never taken a training session yeah. with a senior yeah. team on my own, so it, it was daunting, you know. Well, can I ask, before we get into your first impressions of the team or the players, it's an obvious point to start from, for Van Bridge with that sort of inferiority complex that perhaps rightly we have when it comes to fellas like yourself from the bigger South Down clubs. What had been your perception of Clannabana? Obviously, you went to St. Coleman's and you would have known boys from Banbridge, but as a Gaelic club, what was your maybe preconception, either rightly or wrongly, before you went up? To be honest, I had to get directions to the pitch for the first three in the session. Very good. Yeah. So you'd never play? Uh, I, I, I do remember in minors, we played Clannabana, and Marty Morgan was a year below me at school. Right. And we would have been on a McCrory panel together. Yes. Marty was a fantastic footballer, you know. So it was always where Marty, Marty's wife actually worked fairly close to us in the shop. And you were sort of getting to know people in the town. I was in the town maybe for three or four years. Uh, play, I remember playing is at, at minor level and we would have stuffed, you know, we would have been fairly strong. So what I would have knew nothing about this, Connor, that's to be honest. Uh, and what about the rightly or wrongly, the sort of reputation that we would have had as a tiny team, not just us, but the other tiny teams. Was it correct to say the, the country boys did sort of look down, not, not, not in a nasty way, but you didn't think that we were as tough? as the, the, the big... Certainly you wouldn't have questioned toughness. Right. But coming from the country, you knew you could, you could have got into a tiny's head a yeah. whole lot easier. Yeah. Right. You could have winded his up a whole lot easier. Uh -huh. Um. But the one thing I always remember about playing town teams and what you did go to see with, with Banbridge, the talent. Yeah. The talent that's in the town teams is unbelievable. It's getting the work rate, I suppose. Was well, that's, that's maybe what the application is a boost to the heart. Yeah. And that brings me on to the next question then. Um, I remember the first training session, and again, without casting aspersions on the previous manager, but do you remember what you made us do that first Monday night? Believe it or not, I, I I would keep notes of a lot of the training sessions, <laughs> so I, I could probably find them out. Uh, I remember Frank Dawson actually took us over in 2000. I was 30 and was starting thinking, coming to the end of my days, and I always had an interest in managing teams. Yes. So I actually did keep notes of what uh, of what Frank would have put us through. Uh -huh. So I'd imagine your first training session involved a lot of running. It did. It did. <laughs> To be that, put it mildly, Tony, that'll be a bit of an understatement. Um, I think the lads were completely, well, I know they're completely sickened after it. But in it, you know that the core of the, the panel would have gone up to those training sessions because I think it's probably fair to say morale was at a low web at that stage too. I just cast my mind back. It was 2006 you came. Or? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so it's a long time ago. Um, so the, the boys who went to that first training session were the boys who would have gone regardless of the type of training. But I do remember walking off thinking, Jesus, what is this man going to do to us? And then fairly shortly after that, there were the, the Kilbruni sessions. The 12th of July break was coming up. Right. I, I will, you know, we, we didn't do much marching about Hilltown, but we had a little bit of running <laughs> around the 12th. <laughs> I don't know what you were doing in Banbridge. Well, do you recall, and maybe the older boys, I would disagree with this, but I'd certainly never been brought on a, a training expedition, you know, halfway through the season during that 12th break to anything like that. And obviously the weather was decent. You probably don't remember this. It might have been the 10th night or the 9th night 
up till Bruni, it was scorchingly hot, like properly 24, 25 degrees. And you made us take various turns, trying to get to know each of our names as we, we charged up in sprints, not in slow jogs, and sprints the whole way up to clock more. And again, I remember looking around thinking, Jesus, is this what, <laughs> is this man serious or what? To be honest, again, you know, we'll go back to uh, what we would have been doing with, say, the likes of Frank Dawson then. Yeah. And uh, Jesus, we, we'd have been maybe sand dunes around that time of the year. Yeah. And it, it was tough, like. But I, I do remember saying to you early on, lads, you know, I, I don't know what, what I can give you because I was new to this. Yeah. But what I, what I did say, and I did, I think it helped bring you on, was that it would bring first division training. Or give you first division training. Yeah. And uh, look, it worked. It did work. It did work. And we, we got on a run then, in case we're boring in at the audience, but we, you won. I can't remember your first match. Do you remember uh, who? Bosco. Bosco. And we obviously won that. And then we won the next. And we got on a roll, the like of which I've never since experienced, where we, we just kept on winning. Yeah. Yeah. Week in week, I was saying, Jesus, what, what's, what's the issue with this management malarkey? Like it was, uh-huh. there was some, there was some great games. The, the second game was a home game against uh, Akaderg, and uh, I never forget Big John Murphy must be playing middle of the field. Uh-huh. Him and somebody from Akaderg started punching the shit out of each other <laughs> on the far sideline. I can't remember who the referee was, and he just the two boys were, you know, when the punches were going in, and the referee, right lads, that's enough of that, play on. He let this, play is off. Brilliant. this is great. Then is it correct to say we got up to about seven or eight games in a row, not unbeaten, but having won seven or eight straight, and then did the championship come? We or is that my unbeaten? I remember somebody saying there was something like thirteen games unbeaten. Right. I remember us going to Dara Cross, yeah, who were they were unbeaten, yeah, and like we, we wiped them off the pitch, yeah, and they, they were the main challengers, I think, to get up at that stage. We miss Kelly. That's um, right, yeah. Uh, I, I don't think, Connor, we were beaten in the league and we got to the semi final of the championship where uh, Addy Call beat us. I remember. They were, actually, they were promoted to Division 1 that year. So yeah. you effectively had a Division 1 playing a Division 3 side. And we had a couple of injuries, I think, for that championship semi final as well. We were a bit undercooked, if my memory serves me right, or maybe boy, boys in holiday or something. No, I, I can't remember, but it, well, look, it was a big, it was a big step, step up. Step up, I suppose. Yeah, and tell me, um, from that season, then by the time we got to the end of it, we got promotion. Um, can you recall then, firstly, the personalities that that stuck out at training and at matches amongst the playing staff and the club? Um. You were really only getting to know lads at that stage, you know. I suppose there was a couple of games would have stuck out in my head. Really, uh, I remember. I remember obviously that Dara Cross. You know, Dara Cross. That was correct that they had a bet on themselves to go unbeaten. Was that right for that season? I had heard that somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and uh, to beat them, like for a team, like to be fair to them, I think that was the only time they were beat that year. Uh-huh. Uh, to go up there. And we give them a we give them a hiding like we'll play some super football. Yeah. Um, another game I knew actually had a part to play in this one. Uh, I'll never forget going up to our glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Johnny Johnny Burns couldn't travel for for some reason. Diplomatic reasons as possible. Diplomatic reasons. <laughs> but uh, we were really, really under pressure. It was one of the only games we were under real pressure. Yeah. And uh, you broke your hand or something in that game, broke a finger. Yeah, finger, yeah. And uh, I shouted to Mickey Fairburn to go to midfield when you uh-huh. came off. And uh-huh. I'll never forget Mickey going, who, who, me? And I don't, I, I don't know why, what I've seen in Mickey. I knew he was an athletic lad and yeah. threw him into midfield. And lo and behold, and Mickey score this wonder goal. Yeah. Remember the, the, I don't know what. You know, he stole your thunder because you would have been in the position to score that goal. <laughs> and we all know where it would have ended with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a game we were losing. And, you know, you could start to see a bit of faith in the boys. Yeah. Uh, you know, that game really stood out. And I, I suppose the other big game of that year was uh, when we beat Drumgeat to get promoted. Yes. Uh, that was like the Tony, wasn't it? 
that was down in Tully Leash. Yeah, uh, we uh, we decided we would do our warm up up on the field. Yeah, and then just travel down ready to go onto the pitch. Yeah, and there's a great story from that one. Johnny Burns had a sore back all week mm-hmm. and and couldn't train. Always had a sore back, did they? <sighs> Jesus, he was in, was in a real affliction. <laughs> but, uh, Johnny, Johnny came over to me and he says, "Look, hold back here on the warm up." Yeah, you know, back's a bit sore. I says, Johnny, don't worry about the warm up to maybe around the middle of the second half. I says, you're not playing today. <laughs> so Johnny went in a bit of a strap and jumped into the car and he was heading away. Boo, I think, went running after him and pulled the keys out. He was freaking home. And, but long story short, I don't know if you remember that game. Uh, Johnny came on and just to really wind him up. I had put a couple of boys on before him. Uh-huh. I could I could hear the words or the names I was being called from the <laughs> dugout, but geez, when he came on, he scored five of the finest points. Yeah, long range, seen. long range efforts. Ah, I think yeah. his first one, he maybe set the ball down in the fifty and just tapped her over. Yeah. I do remember. Right, it just point, pointed to me like that. And, I remember that. No. I I remember that game vividly as well. I went for some reason. The way St. Coleman's, you get we serve cohorts from different geographical areas being in the same class. For some reason, my age group at Drumgaff were brilliant. Uh, they're not, they didn't all keep it up um, as, as long as us boys in the clan did. They give it up for various reasons, but the whole way through underage, Donald Mooney and Cahill Grant and Doogie Sheeran and Tommy Connolly, they were all my age. Now, they weren't all playing by the time we played Drumgaff, but I was very friendly with like three or four of those boys, genuinely best friends coming through St. Coleman's. And I vividly remember Donald Mooney coming up to me. He would have been a very handy half back for them. Either at half, maybe at half time or during a stoppage in the first half, blown out of his nose, saying, Jesus, Lonnie, you boys are fit. What's up with you? And he, he couldn't understand. And maybe your psychology worked. Maybe they thought we were late coming down to Tullalish and we hadn't got our warm up. Yeah. And maybe in their heads, we came and they out. Had just won, they had won the intermediate championship yes. as well. Yeah. So they were maybe, a good sailor. Yeah, they were. But I remember. Uh, we were maybe coming into the field and from Gath were running out and that Dougie Sheeran came on to the field. Uh-huh. Oh, I sure he went, to, went to school with him. The PE, the first week of St. Coleman's, he was about six foot three already and hands on him like shovels. Thankfully, we all caught up with him, but it, it, it's very <laughs> But Mickey Furburn run him off the pitch that day. That's it. But, uh, you know, it was, again, it was one of them what days, uh, you know, clam were brilliant. You know, we when Clan played football and played it well, Jesus, it was hard then, to live with. Moving up then, Tony, into Division 2, um, as you know, what you would have known would have been the first time in a long, long time. I wouldn't have the facts or figures, but decades since Clan of Banner were competitive in Division 2. Um, right. Can I ask, did you at that stage, and I know it's, it's casting your mind back 15, 16 years, but what pride did you take in knowing that you'd taken us up? Look, Connor, it was it was brilliant. Uh, it was brilliant to go up, of course. Uh, disappointing not to win. Yeah. Because I did feel in what I seen and what I seen after that we were a better side than Dara Cross. Yeah. Uh, losing Rory Hill in the circumstances that day on a real bad day in St John's, it was so disappointing. But look, there was a good bit of pride. I remember it was all going out the the after. I remember maybe more of the after match <laughs> than the than the pre match stuff, but uh, you know, while everybody was disappointed, I suppose from where you might have been going in the middle of the season to yeah. where you ended off, like everybody was happy enough. Look, getting into Division Two, I remember always saying to you lads, you know, you, you needed to up the pace, yes. and the big thing for me was trying to get into the pace of Division Two. Yeah, and it was tough that first year in Division Two was very very tough. And it was and it was hard. It was hard for the likes of myself trying to uh, to handle the defeats because I I probably took the defeats worse than you boys. Yeah. You know my typical routine was on a Thursday night here in this room. You'd sit and you'd pick the team and you'd have the team talking all ready. And then on a Friday night when the game was over, you come home and if you were beat, Jesus. You wouldn't talk to Elaine, would you? Uh, it could be maybe Sunday before I talked to her. Jesus. You know, but I did. I did. I took the defeats. You know, you always you're sitting thinking, what could I have done better? You know. Yeah. And uh, as I say, that that first year in Division Two was very tough. 
But we consolidated. We survived all right in the end. Uh, well, we ended off in the playoffs. If yeah. you remember, there was ourselves, <laughs> Warren Point, Angus Drummond. Was that the never uh, in the playoffs? But uh, yeah. Around, yeah. Uh, we went till I think we played Glass Drummond in Restrava. Mm. Jesus, just one of them days. Like we totally outplayed them, but we couldn't get the scores. Yeah. And uh, it really looked then that we would be going down because we were going to go and play Warren Point. But we seemed to have a hoodoo. We, we destroyed Warren Point in Mayo Bridge. Mayo Bridge, yes, I remember that. And uh, I can't remember then if it was forced into a playoff with. We basically had to go and play Glass Drummond anyway. Yeah, I think I played think, them in Hilltown. Yeah, it was it, the whole thing started all over again because of us being yeah. point. Each team beat the other team once and yes, yeah, that's right. Start, and then I think I think Warren Point and Glass Drummond played each other. Warren Point beat them, and that was them up. Yes. So then it was down to us. So I suppose effectively the other two teams were going to get two bites of the cherry, but that's the way it was. Uh, and Glass Drummond, in fairness, the first day outplayed us, yeah. and. Uh, Mickey McAllister and Nets, he saved a penalty near the end from Cormac Murphy that was, there's not another man in the county who would have saved it, but yeah. it forced the replay. And uh, again, another one of, I suppose, our great performances that I thought, uh, poor Paddy Feeney had buried his dad the day before and we had looked for the game to be uh, put off because Drummond wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And it was to their detriment because you know, the boys responded for Paddy the next day. We blew them away. We did. And without, without being too solemn about it, there wouldn't have been a team in the county who could have lived with our energy that day. Maybe talent plays yeah. Burden or Kilku might, might have beaten us, but it wasn't going to be a boy who went hiding. And in the oh, end, wow. we, we, we didn't trounce them, but it was comfortable enough in the end because they couldn't live with our... Yeah, it, it, well, maybe with 3.15 or something, you know, it was high scoring. I think Mickey Kennedy ended off in hospital that night. Yeah, he couldn't, make, he coun't make the after party. The after -party. Remember the after party? Do you remember? Was there? There's so many after parties and Jamie's. Well, we'll get on to that maybe in a wee while, well. um, or maybe maybe now is the perfect time. Uh, <laughs> there was a for the people listening. There was a a custom whereby on a Friday night, if you had a home game, you dander across the road. I think to be fair, Jamie's at that stage were genuinely our, our sponsors. So we owed it to them to go over for drinks. And I wasn't always there living in Belfast. The girlfriend would have dragged me off the odd time too, but there was a hardcore, including yourself, Tony, who would have gone over to, to analyze the match. Is that fair to say? It would have been rude not to go. <laughs> now I have one question and I didn't do this until about half an hour before I was going to start recording here. Um, I texted a few boys. Not that I'm short of material, but I just thought that there might be input and contributions from some of the other lads. And some of them re responded with very serious questions, but one or two people have replied with interesting questions. And an unnamed questioner, Tony, has asked you about wearing a pair of three-quarter length jeans to the coach one night that may or may not have been the correct I thought, we were, I thought we were talking about Jamie's. <laughs> Surely the coach would have been a... I think, uh, look, I suppose after the games, we would have went over. I think there was maybe sandwiches and stuff over. In yeah, there was, yeah. We would have headed over, and I suppose in fair, like I would, the car would have been there, and some nights you would have had a drink, and some nights you didn't. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if it was after a particularly good win, it was very hard to go away. <laughs> and uh, now the coach never would have been in the plans. At least you could have parked up the car, and got a taxi home and uh, pick up the car the next day. But I do I remember it was this night we decided the coach would be a, a good option afterwards. Yep. And uh, I think I had Danny McAlinden's uh, jeans, maybe. <laughs> I think I had Mickey, a pair of Mickey Feeney's who wasn't involved with the club at that stage, a pair of white shoes of his. <laughs> I think it was Paddy Feeney was my tailor for the night. But yeah. I got a mixture because I had the I had the clan of Banner gear on man. Obviously, you couldn't get in. To uh -huh. And those nights, Tony, did you end up getting taxis back to Hilltown, or did you end up bunking in one of the boys' houses? Oh no, Jesus! I had to get the taxi back to Hilltown, and then come in and collect the car the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a quiet drive down. Lovely. I'd say Aileen in great form with you then as well. Uh, yeah, well, she understood. It was a good win. Yeah, she was behind the clan too. Well, I must say, and. 
you probably do remember a couple of the dinner dances I would have been put forward, or probably put myself forward to do the speeches after Mickey Fairburn's attempt. You probably remember his, I thought it was after the Dyer Cross game where he suggested you were more like a chef with your ingredients as opposed to a football manager. Right. <laughs> does, that, does that ring a bell at all, no? Well, I have to say, and I, you know, when, whenever I learned you were going to be doing the interview, like I, I did enjoy your speeches at the dinner dances. I was very kind of you, Tony. Yeah, they were very good. I have to say, I always enjoyed the, the Banbridge dinner dance. You know, there was a good bunch of people. A yeah. small crowd there, but a good bunch of people there, you know. Well, the reason I mentioned that, I, I remember saying, and one of them, and it clearly would have been after the, the season whereby we got up to the senior championship. We're still Division Two, but we finished top three or four. And I remember saying this in the stage of the Belmont. Whenever I started playing football, obviously under six, under eights, and then going to St. Coleman's, the idea that Clannabana would be at all in the senior championship would have been laughed at, completely absurd. And I remember that was one of the proudest moments. And this might sound a bit, I don't know what the right word for it would be, but some people might not realise, and you'll know this, during the championship season and down, the senior games involving the bigger clubs, yourselves, Clondoff and Burn and whoever else, always have around the vein played, the national anthem played, and the two teams stand locked in arms and face the tricolour. But they don't play that for the intermediate and they certainly don't play it for the junior. And I'd been, you know, the odd time whilst whenever the clan weren't playing to the marshes or Castlebell and to watch the bigger games. And I always wondered, I thought it's a bit unfair that the, the junior and intermediate teams didn't get that treatment. One of my proudest memories, believe it or not, despite the fact in the end, Enrique gave us a good hiding, they were fairly comfortable against us, was actually standing arm in arm with the lads and listening to the national anthem because we'd finally reached the senior level. Now, it sounds a trite thing and a funny thing to remember about your Gaelic career but I must say that was my proudest moment as a clan man actually playing the senior championship and being able to stand with your team and I don't know why maybe you can explain maybe you don't know why it doesn't apply to intermediate and junior teams uh, to be honest I never even noticed that Connor. I have to say um, and the one thing I would say about the clan I, I didn't pay an awful lot of respect to the intermediate championship yeah and sometimes maybe to the detriment uh, I remember we were playing maybe Dara Cross one game in the championship but we were playing in the, them in the league yes, after I remember. and the points were maybe more crucial in the league and I sort of played a, a bogey team yeah. in the championship and we were beat yeah. uh, but what, the way I always looked at it was I felt we needed to improve and keep going up through the leagues and one of the one of the beneficiaries of that was going to be playing senior championship, yeah. which thankfully we did. But back to your question, I, I didn't even notice that it wasn't played. But, you know, I had a couple of run-ins with officials at intermediate games where, uh, you know, in the championship, they're sitting saying, I, I could run naked up and down a field in a league game in yeah. Division 2, and there was no county board officials there. And yet I couldn't walk maybe 30 yards away from and I did have a few run-ins uh, with different guys and I wish I had a knew that at the time as well Connor it never really struck me well it uh, did we couldn't have done anything different we prepared it as well as we could have that senior championship but as I said just a proud moment obviously being there and being involved in the football match that's obviously the reason you're there but it's the, it's the other wee things that maybe and maybe and I'm not suggesting you wouldn't have thought about teams less than yourself but I suppose you only ever played in the senior championship so you might yeah. not have realised but uh, on a similar type thing Connor, I remember as a 10 year old going and watching Clondoff uh, in 1980 uh, playing in a senior final uh -huh. and we, would, we weren't really big watchers of football my dad wasn't that overly interested in it but obviously they got to a final and I remember watching the Clondoff seniors walking behind the band Yeah, I, I remember then saying to myself I want to walk behind that band. That's for me, yeah. You know, I really, yeah. that was my goal and it took me to freaking 2000 to do it. Yeah. 20 years later, you know. I, 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 was uh, in the interview. I was going to ask you about that, but it seems as good a time as any to ask you about that. I'm, I'm interested to hear your dad wasn't a massive ga man or not, not, no, you know, no, not really. No, he played a wee bit at underage level, but, you know, not. Honestly, he, he was a hill time man as well, Tony, was he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but no, none of our ones really had big interest in football. But myself and Robert, same sort of age, he's a year or so younger than me, and yeah. everybody all around us, all our neighbours were big into football. And there was a couple of big fees beside us. And yeah. I remember Lewis that helped yes, out. Lewis, one year, Lewis is a neighbour of mine. Yeah. Lewis was mad into football, and his mates had been coming down. And they would have wanted a couple of goalies to do nets. So uh-huh. me and Robert would have been fired into opposite nets. So we just grew up playing football every day. You know, and you're talking no, primary school age at this at this time. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then by the time you, you get to St. Coleman's, you're you're fully indoctrinated, are you? I I didn't play a massive amount in St. Coleman's. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played on a fir- the first year team when we won everything we could win, but yeah. uh, we had James McCartan, which was a good start. Start. Uh, Jared Reed that played for Armagh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was there, and look, we had a lot of lads that all, all went on. Th- that age group that I was involved with probably won most All Irelands that you could. Yes. And uh, but I remember getting into second year and third year, fourth year, just couldn't get onto panels at all. Mm-hmm. And it was only maybe, couldn't even get onto the panels. Really? Remember, we would have had trials. Now, we were a very successful team, I suppose, Connor. They were winning, they were winning all Ireland. Um, but I remember my man at one stage telling me, and sort of the penny dropped from about second year to fifth year. I had the same blazer because I didn't grow. Oh, right. right. And you don't notice that at the time, you know? Course, yeah. And then she says, I went through three blazers in one year. Uh huh. And by the time I had got then to seventh year, you know, I was back, I was obviously the same size as everybody else. And I was on our McCrory panel and uh, turned out we were beat uh, by Mahara, the real high score in final. I think uh-huh. we James uh-huh. scored three something. But I quit about three weeks before the final. Uh, I was a very bad sub. You weren't getting a look in the training? In the, Just in wasn't high- getting on at all. And it, now look, Cheapers, we had Ray Morgan and Pete McGrath training us like two two better managers. Yeah, you, you know you couldn't get it. In fact, we'll soon have to finish this. All the big managers are going to interview tonight. Isn't Pete McGrath on at nine o'clock? Right, Laker Gale, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we had two fantastic managers. And look, with the benefit of hindsight, I should have stayed on. You know, uh, but I was sacrificing so much because I had a job on a Saturday and you were going to football and Pete. I subsequently found out, having worked with him at Down Under 21s and that, he had a 15 or 16 that he thrusted, and that's the way he operated, you know. And uh, I left before the final, unfortunately. But I was lucky enough now to the training with them boys and the quality of the lads that we were playing with. I mentioned Marty Morgan earlier, but yeah. like we had some super footballers. You know, I, I came up in an era when we were playing minor football, Down were winning all Ireland's. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, climbed up with the minor champions that year. So you were playing at a high standard, you know. Uh, you probably didn't realise it, but when you look back now, it was a it was a good standard. You were playing against boys that were winning all Ireland's. And that that minor Clondup team then formed the backbone of the two thousand team. Tony did it. It, it didn't. Uh, we were badly hit. We had, geez, we were strong in the in the eighties. We won a couple of minor championships, beaten a couple of finals, but then immigration hit us hard. A lot of lads went to America, England, and and didn't come back. Uh, we had a great side then, I think, from 93, 94, 95. You're Shane Wards, Paul yeah. Shields, Patsy McShane, and them guys. Yeah. So I suppose you had a good run there of 10, 12 years of winning championships. Uh-huh. But it still took us to 2000 uh, to win a championship. And what are your memories of that, uh, Tony? Is it right to say, were you full back in that team? Aye, that's right, yeah. Or were you always full back? No, no, I probably would have been more a half back. Uh-huh. Uh, we were a young side, so I suppose maybe just the older head got me in there. Yeah. Frank Dawson made us work very hard. Yeah. And I suppose that's why I made you boys work very hard. He yeah, got us superbly exactly. fit. Uh, we were disciplined, and we had some super footballers. You did. I, I was that. was in Newcastle that final, wasn't it? No, no. It was one of the first in Uri. Was it in Uri? Well, then we missed. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, we had a tough run that year. We had to beat Burn in the first round after a replay down Patrick, and then just a, a Trojan of a game against Mayor Bridge in the semi final. Uh-huh. Uh, but I think our fitness stood to us, and that's again that I have carried that on into management. You yes. know against Mayo Bridge in that semi-final. It was the usual story. They kept pegging back, pegging back. But we had the fitness for the last 10 minutes. 
and we were able to to turn them over and and can I ask at that stage, Tony, had your we got to know you obviously <laughs> through through the years and you got to know who our main rivals were. And there's no point saying their name, but is it correct to say that Mayo Bridge would be your A number one in terms of rivals? I I would say maybe more Bourne because whenever I started uh eighty eight, eighty nine, you know, Bourne were contests in all Ireland finals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my first championship game, Bourne were beat. Burn had won the All Ireland in eighty seven, won the Ulster in eighty eight, mm-hmm. and were again going going for glory. And we put them out in the first round of the championship in eighty nine. It was some baptism. Uh huh. And can I ask then? Well, obviously, a high point of your playing career would have been winning that senior championship. Do you remember much about the final whistle going? Just relief, Connor. Was it relief? You know, as I said to you at the start of it there, you know, the walking behind the band. Yeah. We got to a final in 97 and I was dropped to the final. Oh, I didn't? And, uh, I didn't get to walk behind the band. And uh, I think it just look, it, it made me more determined Yeah. To, to play and it kept me going. And I actually played on those 34, 35. But, you know, as you say, the, the, the determination for you boys to uh, get the, the around the end played before. Yes. Uh, and Jesus, I hope it's sooner rather than later that it happens again for you. Well, yeah, I, I suppose the next question is, have you been following? I suppose it's difficult now. I'm, I understand the audience might not know, but you've gone into business with one of our local boys. Mutual friend has already been referenced, Mickey McAllister. Yeah, yeah. You're busier than ever, so you probably find it difficult to keep up with, obviously there's been no football this last year anyway, but even before that. I have... Uh... I'm not a great watcher of football, believe it or not. Yeah, you told me. Even, I, I don't know what has happened. Maybe this last three or four years that, you know, I hadn't been even going to watch Clonduff that much. Go to an odd game. Now, I would make a point. I always try to get uh, one Clannabana game a year. Yeah. And uh, I like getting down to see. The likes of Leonard there was a great help. Yes, of course. Never. He's a great man. You know what I mean? And I like to go down and meet him. And then you go into your club rooms afterwards and you get to meet all the old heads. And such a friendly club, you know, and... No, Barb or not, uh, Brenda and all them is making the tea. Yeah, you know, great people, and you know, I like to think I made a lot of good friends in the clan. Well, you you did. I can confirm you did, Tony. I know you're probably too humble to to say that with any certainty, but you don't need to assume that you're held in great esteem. Um, can I ask you? And you've mentioned the back, and we've talked a lot about the football career and players. Um. Those people behind the scenes, and obviously this podcast goes out in the most strange and uncertain of times whenever there's no football being played. And as to the credit of the culture committee that they've got this thing up and running. Um, can I ask, obviously I've asked you how you've got into GAA. What does the GAA mean to you personally? I think it's, it's the community. Yeah. You know, certainly here in, in Clondoff, we know nothing different. You know what I mean? It's talked about starting to play football, me and our fella running around to the football field. It's where you met your mates. It's all it's all we done, you know. Uh, I was up the mountain, it was yesterday, out for a walk, and one of the local landlords met him on the way down. And I was just saying to him, Jeez, I can't wait these get opened up again. You know, I said just to sit around the court, sit around the counter and have an old banter with boys about the games and all that. And certainly in Hilltown, that's, that's what it's all about. We get around the bar stool and a wee bit of crack about the games. And there's games played from 30 and 40 years ago. And so-and-so dropped my father for such and such a game. And, you know, it's... And can I ask, uh, travelling with work, you're, you're in London a fair bit, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, is it correct to say then that the GA would be a sort of binding thing amongst the Irish community that you'd meet over there and you'd socialise with and, and work with over there as well? Yeah, you know, most of the work we do is for another Irish firm and there's lads there that, you know, they're involved. Some of them are still playing football. Yeah. Uh, it's always, it's never too far away, you know. Yeah. Once you sort of get to know maybe someone's surname or whatever and yeah, yeah. what club what club are you involved with, you know, and can play the name game then, do you know this? Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's uh, inevitably, if everything goes back to football. Yeah. Or hurling, you know, you'll meet, you'll always meet 
couple of people to do business with, big hurlers down in Tipperary, you know, you still have something in common with them. Very good. Uh, we're, we managed to get sidetracked there. I took you off on a, a tangent, but um, can I try and bring you back to your memories of the team the year after that miraculous escape from the clutches relegation, 07 into 08? What are your memories of that team and how it progressed? Well, look, Connor, it, it was easy to see that last game, the performance the boys give. Uh, I knew then, you know, there was the bones of a good side if we get ourselves focused, which we clearly were for for that last game. And I don't know if you remember the start of the training in 2008, but it was pretty, it was tough. Yeah. It was a really good, because I remember for 2007, we weren't long finished. I think it was maybe... Very late, wasn't it? It was maybe November yeah. when we beat or, Yeah, so we hadn't much, you know, we couldn't start the pre-season. So long story short, we we had time for a good pre-season. Yeah. And you lads were fit. And as the gods would have it, the first game would be against Anna Clone. Yes. If you remember that. And it was at home. And uh, thankfully, I think we won maybe by a point or something. But like the crowd that night in Banbridge was unreal. Yeah, I remember that. The, the top field like was packed with cars, and I, I don't know where you got them from. There was all these barriers out to keep people. You know, it was it, it was brilliant to see it. It was brilliant to see it, and then to start off with a win. Uh, I think then we went to Killeaf and seven points behind at half time or whatever we ended off we should have won ended up with a draw and it was maybe the next game or the game after we had to play a tolly leash and was stuffed then yes recall that so we got off we got off to a real good start uh we had beat dundrum things were going well we went down to brainsford they yep. beat us but I remember coming off the field and saying, Jesus, we're not far away. Because like, Brainsford were... Oh, you'd, you'd, you'd have expected to have lost to them. So they were senior champions about seven years before, six, seven years before. Yeah, yeah. You know, and the three or four county players and that. Yeah. And uh, I remember... We, we would all... Interrupt you there, Tony. I remember you did one of your strategic tactical ploys on me there. Usually I would have been starting at six or else I would have been starting at five. But either way, Connor McGinn came up either at that <laughs> wing half forward or centre half forward and lined up against me straight away. It was either you or, or, or your brother whistled, no, nope, Lonnie, you go to the other side. I put on, Jesus, don't know who it was. Somebody faster anyway to run after me again. It was probably, probably JP was given the task. <laughs> and I'm sure McGinn hasn't forgotten it either. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, there was, there was a brilliant start to that season, and at, we were we were going really well. Uh, I think that was around the time of the infamous Shamrocks game, uh, where the referee who was championing played right. on and played on, looking for a draw. Yeah, and then there was a bit of a pitch invasion afterwards. But anyway, that 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 aside, uh, we were flying that year. Like we we were top two, top three all year. Yes, and. Um, we actually beat Brainsford in in Banbridge that year. Yeah. Uh, I remember Ross and DJ, who were the county selectors at the time, coming down, and uh, Ross coming over afterwards. You know, this was it was such a shock for us to beat Brainsford. In fact, yeah. we were the first team to beat them that year. And uh, actually, look, things were flying, but the, the downside, I suppose, we we qualified into the top three. Which qualified us for a senior championship. Yes. Uh, Warren Point seemed to have our number that year. Yeah. You know they just. But the other thing, you know, we played them in the sh in the championship that year as well in what was a fantastic game of football up in Ballyholland. Ballyholland, remember? Yeah. It's an incredible game. Beat us by a point or something in the end of it. Uh, yeah. Still. But, uh, <laughs> it was a game we should have won, but. What annoyed me that year, we had an awful games called off around that period. We were flying. And then there was the break for the holidays. We maybe played one or two games. And a lot of our games kept getting postponed. I don't recall that at all. We, we, we had a run where we maybe didn't. Yeah, we, we had an awful gap of football. Uh -huh. And uh, look, don't get me wrong. 
you know, Brainsford were the best side in the league that year. I think we were the second best side. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we ended off then. We went into the playoffs against uh, Warren Point and they turned us over. And it was very disappointing. Yeah. You know, I really do. Brainsford were by far the best side that year. But I really do, from a Clan of Banner perspective, I would say that was a team well capable of playing first division football. Do you think so? Holding their own? <laughs> yeah, really, really. You know, the talent. The talent and the bench. The bench that we had that year was really, really good. And then, Tony, can I ask you... Yeah, the, the memories of the following season then, that was obviously bitter disappointment not to get up to Division 1, but that would have led through to the Senior Championship, which I've referenced earlier on, and the, the prestige of being eligible to play in the Senior Championship, albeit not in Division 1. Can you recall much about the league campaign then of that year of 09? Uh, no, I can't. Probably not an awful lot, Connor, for the, the simple... We didn't do anything spectacular that year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I think the memory of the hard work put a lot of lads off. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of boys sort of said, shit, I'm not, I'm not going through that again. And we certainly weren't the team that we were in 2008. Yeah. Uh, we were mid-table, we mid Division 2. Uh, took a tank in, in the championship. Well, it was great to be there, uh, but we became mid-table. Yes. And I have to say, yes. at the end of that 2009, I remember saying, I think, I think that's me. I think I'm done here. Yeah. And that, that uh, wasn't a selfish thing. You, you could see that there wasn't the same response, or did you not have the, the energy anymore, or was it just a natural end of the line, do you think? Well, I think you probably heard me say it before. It's the same voice, and that's why I always change maybe my number two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think at that stage, Lewis maybe was in with me. Uh, we were starting to bring through lads like Mal, uh, yeah. Mal McGee, Liam yeah. Devlin, Shane Nelson were starting to come into the side um, and doing well. Yeah. But they were young, you know. It was tough for them. Uh, the likes of Dean Lennon and that was pushing. Yeah, come through, mate. Right? Uh, you know, so there's a wee bit of there was a wee bit of a change going on. And then, so we had that natural break with you, but you were tempted back. In, I presume it was the winter of thirteen. Tony, no, uh, I actually. I... Sorry, go on ahead. I uh, two thousand and ten. There was. I came back in 2000, or sorry, well, not I didn't quit, but in 2010, there was wind then that Rory Simpson and Kevin Anderson may come to us. That's right. And that sort of, you know, I sort of thought, you know, it's one of the things about the GAA, there's no transfer market. Yeah. And I did think we needed a wee bit of fresh blood because the older boys were getting complacent. The younger boys weren't just ready. Yeah. And I did sign up till it again. The two lads obviously went down a clone. Uh, I suppose that was five years there. A new voice probably was needed. So again, look, we finished in Division 2, but we weren't pushing. We weren't pushing anymore. Yeah. And are we right to assume that if you're not challenging and you're, you're finishing mid-table, the, not the enjoyment goes for you, but the the promise of silverware and the promise of glory is a driving factor for you? If, if I think I'm getting 100% from 90% of the lads, yeah, I could have lived with that, Connor, you know, but I wasn't. And look, maybe some of that was my fault too, you know. As I say, you're there five years. It's the same voice. Yeah. And then what kind of ask then tempted you back? Winter 13 going into 14 then? I was working in a site in Liverpool. Yeah. And I fell into a Mr. Paddy Feeney uh -huh. and a Mr. Malagy McGee uh -huh. on different occasions. And Paddy was talking about potential and all the rest. And McGee was telling me how he was going to become one of the best players in Ireland. <laughs> 
So uh, it was pro probably Paddy you could have took the more serious. <laughs> and I think Paddy maybe went to the committee and said, look, Tony would be interested again. And, and long story short, yeah, went and spoke to the committee and, and came back again. Uh, Liam McCrum joined me then yeah. on the sideline. And uh, look, I think that's, that has been has probably the best year for Clannabana in I don't know how many years. Yes. You know, I certainly wouldn't say it was the best team. Uh, I'll go back to what I said about 2008. I think that was a, an unbelievable side. But the work rate in 2014, unbelievable. Such a hard working side. Uh, and for, such for a the fit people, side. Sorry, Tony, for the people listening who don't know, that side very nearly went, if they didn't go unbeaten, then they were inches away and seconds away from going up as champions of Division 2, isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and look, I blame, <laughs> I blame the county board quite a bit on that, Connor. Uh, we would give a fixture, fixture list. And I remember saying to the lads, boys had been planning on holidays. Yeah. We had to play a Dara Cross. And I said, lads, don't, you know, don't go there. Uh, save it. We have two weeks. And the next thing, the county threw in a fixture against Drumgath. Yeah. Which ultimately, I suppose, cost us winning yeah. the division. And uh, we didn't even lose that to withdraw that. You know, th that particular year, we, that was a draw. Uh, yeah. uh, enough, enough to allow the point. Uh, uh, Liam McGarry won't thank me. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to name him, but... Her Liam was one, and to be honest, the way Liam was playing that year, I would have backed Liam 99 times out of 100. You know, I think he took, I think Liam took the right option, what yeah. he was doing all year. You would have expected to beat the keeper, and that would have put us four or five, would have yeah. put us four points up. Uh, Haggy Downey then scored the best point he ever scored in his life, and it ended up in the draw, and I suppose ultimately. But look, I suppose if you look at that season as a whole, uh, Connor, we're on point with the best side in the league. Yeah. Uh, and we were the second best side. Uh, but here, it would be nice now. It would be nice to win the league. Yeah. Well, what it did was then cement Division One football for the first time. And, and again, somebody will correct me, some of the anoraks within the club. An even longer period of drought had been, the clan had been out of Division One. That had been the case out of the senior championship. So, again, it goes without saying, Tony, I assume you're very proud to be the man to take, take the clan up to Division One. Oh, yeah, look, that was brilliant. Tony, you'd been talking before technology interrupted about how proud you were leading the clan up um, to Division 1, despite the fact they finished second, ultimately, to, to a very good Warren Point side, and how proud you were. Um, can I ask you again to express, if you can, I know you're going back about a decade at least, um, your feelings on leading that clan team up to Division 1? Look, it, it, was, uh, it was brilliant, Connor. Was some achievement. I'll, I'll never forget the night when we clinched promotion, we beat Saul. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were starting to make hard work of it, you know. Uh, I suppose we had worked so hard earlier in the season. I could see the team tiring and, you know, the games were becoming more difficult. Yeah. But we got over the line against Saul and uh, Cahill Murray, who's a good friend of mine, was oh. managing Saul at the time. I was having a good chat with him outside and he was delighted for us too, you know, and uh, I could hear the party going on in the dressing rooms and like to go in there and probably the best satisfaction I could get was to see the happiness in all, in all your faces. And I suppose the one face I'll never forget is uh, Itchy. Itchy. Never, I, never, I never seen a man as happy in my life. And I think he came over to me and he says, Tony, this is the greatest night in my life, you know? <laughs> and, uh, Okay, it was something else, you know. You know, the I was made up for you, but it, it was great for me to sit back and to see to see how proud you boys were and the, the happiness that you lads were having to get yeah. there. You know, it it was brilliant, you know, at the Can I ask, did you and I know it was a different side in two thousand and seven to to the side that ultimately got up to division one and fourteen, maybe only half the players were still around. But can I ask, honestly, looking back with hindsight, and you won't be hurting feelings, but did you see any potential within the club in 2007 that there'd be within a decade playing Division 1? And I want you to be honest. Uh, almost definitely. 
You did? If 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 that if that first team, as I call them, I, I call it the two teams. Uh, if that first team had worked as hard as the second team, yeah, no doubt. Right. You know, certainly the second side. You know, Mal McGee, Liam Devlin, two exceptional footballers. Yes, could have played for any team in the county. Yeah. Uh, but no, Jeepers, Connor, don't ever underestimate the strength of side that you guys had. But getting the work out of Enoughius was, okay. was a little bit. Asher, 20 years, 20 of having a, nearly a team or just missing a couple of links that you know could easily fit in. Um, every year, you'd have one or two boys that either injured or off on holiday or had fallen out with either yourself or the other management or he didn't feel they were wanted. If we could have harnessed everybody mm-hmm. throughout that decade who was eligible and willing to play for the clan, Jesus, we could have, I think we could have consolidated in Division 1. I'm not saying we would have won cha- senior championships, but we could have been a decent Division 1 side for the good best part of the decade. Oh, definitely. I have no doubt about that. I, I look at them players and me and Lewis used to always talk. Me and Lewis, as you can imagine, had some great conversations. I can imagine. I can. <laughs> <laughs> we always, on, on the trip home, we talk about, you know, who we thought could play for Clondoff and who, if was born in Clondoff, yes. would certainly would be playing for Clondoff. And, that, and that's the difference, believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it brings me on, and I'm not going to be unfair to you and ask you to be unfair to others. I know you don't want to name the best side of the clan boys you've managed, but I think this is true, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong. At one stage or another, I think it may have either been Ross or DJ had asked you to recommend some clan boys to go to, go to county trials. Yeah, and yeah. There was a list of three you gave. Now, the audience, if they're clan... Well, again, you're, you correct me. This is the story I heard anyway. Um, two of which, or two of whom, most people might not be too surprised, they being Rory Hill and J.P. Gartland, both at the pick of their powers. And this was maybe this 08, 09, the first good side. Uh, I think Ross came in. Did they come in around, oh, no, we were Division 3, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was 06, uh, end of 06, start of 07, yeah. The third one was more of a soccer boy, should we say. And he yeah. himself, to be fair to him, he's one of the few boys I texted before this chat, just in case that anybody at any other angles. He said, who's that big soccer playing galoot you recommend for the county to go up to the to county trials? Ali Boo McGraw went up. Was that a I new record? He, he didn't go. Had he not go? He didn't go. No, Boo scored in that, that season. Boo played full forward most of the year. Yes. And he scored something like 17 or 18 goals. He's unstoppable. And his brain running off the ball. Uh-huh. And it was something that I was able... I, I was happy enough to go and congratulate him when he, made, when he maybe made a run, which soccer players would do. He made yeah. a run to create space for somebody else to go into. And I would have sort of thanked him for that, you know. So it was trying to get that unselfishness. But he had the touch of a goat. Ah, uh, no. Well, his elbows weren't... Weren't it? He wasn't able to afford the elbows either, I must say, having to mark him the old time in training. Boo, Boo was what, six foot two, six foot three. He yeah. was fairly athletic, but could have been worked with. And I, and I spoke to Ross and I said, Look, I have a lad here. He's rough around the edges, <laughs> but he's what you're looking for. He's six two, six three. Yeah. He's a smart footballer and he has scored, as I say, I can't remember, 16 or 17 goals for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said, You know, he's not, he's not a selfish player. And Ross was interested because Ross was trying to build a big team. Yes. You know, he took he took Gareth Johnson from Berlin. Yeah. Well, this was in the round that sort of fad of Kieran Donaghy and yeah. everyone trying to copy. And then Cork tried with the big Michael Cousin, who wasn't anywhere near the footballer. But there was a fad, the big man yeah. at the edge of the square for a while. So, as I say, who knows? Like, you know, Boo was in Division 3. Who knows? Like, if the likes of Boo, as I say, had been born in Hilltown. Yeah. Uh, and just... That wee bit more committed. Yeah. And the other two, I think we all agree. I think Michael McAllister, or Mickey McAllister, I don't know why I called him Michael there, uh, did his podcast a few weeks ago and he named the two boys, JP and Rory, in his career 15, including some real all stars, county boys, boys that he's played with with the county and Sigerson. Yeah, Gordonstein. Would you agree with Michael's assessment of? Obviously, I, I wasn't there at the at the trials, but 
the feedback came to me that JP had done really well. Yeah. But again, it wasn't that what Ross and DJ were looking for. They were looking bigger men. Yeah. And I like to tell you what, JP's a big man, but at county level, he's, you know, yeah. JP, look, I'm six foot, 13 stone, but I'm not big if it comes to county level. You know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Uh, Rory Hill, I remember speaking to Rory afterwards. And I, I, I have to say, and in my time being there, like Rory Hill to me was, it was something else. Yeah. You know, when we'd sit in, in Jamie's afterwards and had the sort of after match uh, conversation and then whenever maybe shots could have been introduced, we started singing songs. Yeah, yeah. And maybe uh, my bias of Rory Hill when I started singing a We All Dream of a Team of Rory <laughs> Hills. No, it's true. And I wonder, did you notice... Uh, maybe about a year ago, I think it was during the first part of lockdown, I think it was Toots Campbell or somebody in the social committee did sort of pen picks of the senior panel. Um, right. Various questions were asked in terms of, you know, football and hero or person you look to growing up. One of the questions was one of the clan boys that you'd have back in the team now. And this is the young clan team that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure how many were, were asked. Maybe 10 fellas were asked, 12 fellas. 60, 70% of them named Rory Hill as the boy they'd bring yeah. back. So it just goes yeah. to show. And some of those lads were the, the very young lads who would have been watching Rory at the ages of six or seven or eight coming up with their dad and seeing yeah. this maniac going around clotheslining people and running out of position. Oh, and then, but to be fair, also not being able to shoot. So whilst we're praising him and, and he's going to be listening to this, at least he had one flaw. <laughs> Good shoot. Yeah. I was a I'm more accurate okay. shooter than him. He, he was a super talent, you know, you, you could have took him out. I played him a lot in the full forward line and yeah. you just knew you fed the ball in, he was going to win it. Yeah. And he had a good sense to lay it off. Uh, and when you took him out around the middle, he could have, like, his feeding was immense for a fairly small fella. Yeah. But Rory, Rory to me was a, a super talent. Would he be good enough for County again? Probably he has the problem that too many down players have at the minute. He's too small. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, one of the things I have to say when I first came into Banbridge, geez, you said some amount of big men. Hallions. Well, there was, there was a Hallion there. <laughs> a real life Hallion. Yeah, yeah, a few of them. Um, it's funny you should say that Rory's versatility coming out. You may, may not remember this, but uh, one final we story I'll tell about your management of me. We went away to Unraked in a, a meaningless game towards the, the end of one season. I, I think remember. Marty we'll Clark was back from Oz for the second time, so he wasn't the 2010 wonder kid, but he is still, I think he'd heard it the previous game, he's still pulling up trees. And we obviously knew he was going to be playing at 11. And a bit like that Brentford story, I'd been sitting at six the whole season through. It had nothing to lose in the game. And he came before, I think you'd actually named the team, you'd, you'd picked me at number six, and then you came before the throw and said, Connor, we're going to start you at full forward tonight. We're going, to, we're going to start Rory Hill. And Rory pulled back for that sole reason to get a dig into Marty Clark. And Jesus, I enjoyed my six or seven minutes. I don't know who it was. Paddy Gillen might have been up beside me. A two-man full forward line of me and Paddy Gillen for seven or eight minutes before you realise this isn't going to work. It's a sign you're coming to the end of your career when you're pushed from a uh, centre-half back into full forward. Been there, done that, Connor. Never so happy. Never so happy to avoid having to mark Marty Clark. Um, uh-huh. we're, we're about to finish it up, Tony. And as I said, you were, you're good enough. And I think it's, it's just right. You don't want to name your, your best 15. We've touched on some of the best players that you've, you've managed and you've played with throughout your St. Coleman's career and your Clondoff career. Um, can I ask, who was your most difficult opponent? Uh, look, early 90s, I was a defender, Connor, and it was horrible, I have to say, uh, you know, not trying to be comical or anything. It was horrible being a defender and being an average football. You know, you weren't a county footballer. You're coming up against Mickey Linden, your Shorty trainers, your Brandy Mason. There's two people that weren't on the All Ireland winning teams. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Gerard Dagens was, you know, there was so many good footballers then. Um, you know, I even come into the late nineties, early two thousand. Training was horrendous. You were marking Shane Ward in okay. training. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's not much fun being a defender, Connor, as you would no, know. I know. I know. 
Jesus. And uh, butterfly, <laughs> tell me before you go out, hoping that you don't let yourself down, as opposed to a forward where you're excited about what you can show. You know, it's it's the yeah. fear yeah. of failure as opposed to well, maybe that's just me, the fear of failure rather than the the desire to show off what you can do. But I can only imagine trying to run after Mickey Linden. And this is a peak Mickey Linden as well. This wasn't. I remember in the early 90s, there's wee bar, it's closed now, Village Inn, and we all used to go to Hilltown after a game. And I marked Mickey, and Mickey scored four points. Mm -hmm. We went in afterwards. Why is buying him a drink? Jesus, young Wilson, that was some game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he had scored four points, you know. So, yeah. look, that's what you're up against. And uh, look, people knew these, these players were some of the best in Ireland. So, yeah. you know, it was difficult then. My my football career was easier in two thousand and three, two thousand and four, when I was quitting. Yeah. And can I ask then, as manager of us for those two periods, I don't think I've ever heard you say this, but what players did you hate coming up against, or hope they were injured or off on holiday or suspended? Were there any particular individuals from random clubs that you, you felt had a had the voodoo sign over us? Oh man! I probably should have prepared you for that question. It came out of yeah. nowhere. I don't think we ever really set out to prepare. Or you know, obviously Paul McComaskey. I remember when we were playing on drum, you would have been thinking, "Will it take an extra man back back to mark him?" But I don't think we ever really set out. John Clark when he was playing, yeah, uh, unraped. But. Uh, Jeepers, no, I don't ever remember us really sitting out and saying, right, there's a star player and we'll have to do something special. You know what I mean? Not that I remember now, but unless you want to. No, no, I'm not. I'm just wondering then. The uh, question, is, is that more of a, a reflection of your management style then, where you, you weren't as worried as the opposition, you're more focused on what we could do? Exactly, exactly. And yeah. even the way we played, we always would have had one man back, maybe covering a bit of space. So... Uh, and I think we had we had good brainy players that could play that way. The likes of Rory Gillen, uh, real smart footballer. Rory could have sat back as a sweeper, and he knew where to be to intercept the ball. You know, yeah. He was shit at free kicks against Savile. I remember that. Ah, stop it. Well, that's <laughs> leading me on to the, the final series of questions. The final we conversation we'll have. Um, not that I'm, have you any regrets, but. Uh, is it safe to assume that the high points outweigh the low points when you look back on your, your various times in, in boundary? Yeah, yeah, most definitely, Connor. Look, as I say, I like to think I made a lot of friends. Uh, the amount of weddings that yeah. we were invited to, I had to start lowering the threshold of the, of the gifts we were given because I thought maybe <laughs> we just kept getting invited because the presents were good. But uh, <laughs> look, I, I can still walk down the street in Banbridge people will stop and talk to you, you know what I mean? And, and still talk about football, you know, yeah. which is brilliant. Uh, mentioned Leonard earlier. Leonard phones me every couple of months for a bit Does of crack, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, God, I, yeah. Uh, some great people in the club, you know, the likes of uh, Mickey Gillen and Garvin were always there for me. Yeah. Uh, and, and made you welcome in the club. And as I say, everybody, you know, all, all the players... By and large, look, a few run-ins with a few of the players. Players wanted to be playing and yes. were disappointed. But I think if I could back it up, I'd like to think it was fair. Yeah, and I can say, if, if there were any fallouts, the grudges haven't been kept by anybody. It's not as if yeah, it's yeah. personal. Course, yeah, yeah. Uh, as I say, always would have been fair. So, no, disapp disappointments, you know, disappointed we didn't win Division Three. Can't blame anyone. It was just a bad day. Disappointed against from Gath. You know, circumstance. We we had three or four of our best players were on holiday because I told them to go on holiday. Yeah. Based on the fixture list. So no, uh, there was one championship game against Glen. Found out a few of the boys have been out in the beer because we probably underestimated Glen. Look, that happens in every club. So look, nothing. Nothing you know, keeps you awake at night anyway. No, 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 nothing but, I had nothing but, but praise for Clannavana. Uh, I went and managed Clonduff. It was never my intention to manage any other team. I, fe I fell into another job for this season um, and looking forward to it. But to be honest, uh, 
I always wanted to be loyal to the likes of Clannabana and yeah. Duff, who I always would have said were my two clubs. Yeah. Um, so. And uh, your fellow Orange coming through now, the Clanduff ranks, or is he as into football as he as he was whenever he was up around? The Still ball? until he had a bad injury there at the start of the year, and uh, running down to Belfast this week won't help his football <laughs> career. But uh, no, he, he's he's done some sort of damage to uh, his leg and few muscle injuries there so he might have to miss this year but no look he still loves the football uh, uh, and he's still a wee he still has a wee soft spot for Clannabana too very good well uh, we have a soft spot for, for himself and yourself and the, and the entire Wilson clan including Robert and Lewis who who accept as an honorary member of the Wilson clan even if you don't anyway Tony it's been a pleasure that the audience probably don't know whilst we're only probably hitting an hour, we've been at this about two and a half hours because of somebody's internet connection. So thank you for your patience. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it didn't put you on the spot too much. Oh, no, I have to say I enjoyed it, Connor. It's not, this wouldn't be my thing, as you boys would all know. Yeah. But uh, it was good to get even thinking back to all the old games and all that sort of carry on. And as I say, look, it brings back good memories. It doesn't bring back bad memories. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and look... I would, I would love it. I would love to see Clannabana. I know there's a lot of work going on at underage level, yeah. and it's important that you continue that. And it would be great to see you get up there and get up in the Division One. And hard work does it, lads. If you look at, you know, uh, I hate to say it, you look at what Kilku have done. Yeah. Uh, there's no reason if any if any club puts their mind to it, and it's going to take people of your run, Connor. Uh, to realise what it took to get to Division 1 yeah. to get the boys back there again, you know. Very good. Look, Tony, thank you very much for, as I say, your patience and your, your openness with everybody. Hopefully I'll see you in person again soon in this damn lockdown finishes and we'll Hopefully see you. So. I hope not in court. <laughs> not in court. Going to be, see, either in a pub or on the sideline somewhere, not in court. Yeah, yeah, one or the other. <laughs> one or the other. Thanks again, Tony Wilson. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Um, this has been another Clan Abana Keeping Up the Clan podcast. Thanks again, Tony. I just